Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Embedded World. Good morning, Risk Five. My name is Rupert Baines. I'm from Codesip, and I'm going to be talking about I fought the law and the law lost. Talking about Moore's Law, Denard Scaling, and Risk Five. How those things tie together, and how Risk Five creates new opportunities for an industry new opportunities for an industry that faces major challenges. I fought the law and the law lost. Or, as The Clash put it, um, I fought the law and the law won. Sadly, The Clash, excellent band, they got it wrong. In this case, the law has lost. I'm going to be talking about Moore's law. I'm going to be talking about Amdahl's law. I'm going to be talking about Denard scaling and how that feeds into Risk Five and the opportunities for the industry. Just to introduce, I'm from Codesip. Codesip is a European company doing Risk Five with a twist. We were actually the first company with a commercial Risk Five IP product. Um, that comes about because of the way we do development. We were very early in supporting Risk Five. We've been major contributors to Risk Five International. Our founder is on the TSC, and we're very proud to be here today as part of the Risk Five community. Risk Five. Personally, I hate the term Risk Five is open source. It's very misleading. The key thing about Risk Five is not open source. The key thing about Risk Five is open standards. In that respect, Risk Five is the same as GSM or LTE or 802.11 or ANSI C. The specification is public. The architecture is public. But what you do with that, the implementation, the delivery, the development, can be up to you. Now, of course, there are open source deliveries of Risk Five, Boom, Rocket, Pulp, those are open source. But there are also proprietary deliveries of Risk Five, Codesip, Andes, Sci Five, and all the others in this community who are making a living out of licensing Risk Five architectures are not open source. But they are open standard, they are interoperable, and we all benefit from the huge ecosystem around Risk V. Interoperability, compatibility, cooperation, as well as competition. Moore's Law. Gordon Moore published this in 1965. Um, unlike some of the other laws, there have been quite a few iterations and quite a few tweaks. Now, Ohm's Law is always V equals IR. You know, Newton's law of gravity is always the same. Moore's law has wobbled. It was the number of transistors doubles every 18 months. Then it was the number of transistors doubles every two years. Then every year. Now it's back to every two years. There were two different versions. There is the number of transistors doubles, and there was a different version about the cost per transistor, halves. But the interesting point is, although Gordon Moore published this in 1965 and was talking about integrated circuits, actually, the logic behind it, the compelling point of his argument, is much, much stronger and has lasted much longer. In fact, if you go back to Babbage and his analytic engine, if you look at Conrad Zoos and the Z1 using relays, the performance you can get out of a processor, out of an architecture, that has been pretty much doubling for over a century. And that still continues. The number of transistors, the number of operations doubles roughly every two years. However, what is not true, and what hasn't been wrong for about the last few years, is the cost, this idea that the cost per transistor halves, that basically broke when we got 14 nanometer. 
And now, for the last few process nodes, the cost per transistor is going up. So we can no longer rely on dumb scaling. We can no longer rely on, let's put more transistors in, let's have a bigger cache, let's do more multi-core, it'll be okay because it's cheaper. I don't have to work because Moore's Law is going to do the work for me. Sorry, that doesn't apply. That is no longer true. The cost per transistor is going up. So, Hensley and Patterson, obviously the, you know, the godfathers of processor architecture, very respected guys, and the genesis of RISC-V. The genesis of RISC, if you want. I mean, it's even bigger than that. They made the point in the most recent edition of the textbook that scaling has stopped. Denard's scaling stopped a few years ago. Amdahl's law has run into the sand. As I said, Moore's law, depending on which version, is broken. And in a, the you know, quantitative approach to computer architecture, they make the point that this is not a problem. This is an opportunity. We are actually entering a golden age for computer architecture because the attention needs to be on innovation. It needs to be on being clever. You can no longer just be dumb, have a bigger cache, have more multi-core, make things run faster, and rely on process nodes to do the work. Instead, the architect needs to do the work. We need to be smart about how we design processes, and then we will get better performance. So ideas like domain-specific compute, heterogeneous compute, accelerators, hardware-software co-design, co-integration. These are the technologies that we need for the next generation, for the next decade. And that ties in very nicely, because that is the principle that Codasip was founded on. We do sell standard RISC-V cores. We've got a very nice portfolio of standard IP, ranging from low-end microcontrollers, through high-end embedded processors, through application cores. But the key differentiation about Codasip is we make it easy to customize. We offer all of our customers an architecture license. All of our customers have the ability both legal ability in the license and technical ability to differentiate, to customize, to modify. And this is the potential of RISC-V. This is what Hennesley and Patterson were talking about when they said the innovation in processors. This is the idea behind RISC-V being an extensible architecture that uniquely Codasip puts that capability in the hands of ordinary engineers, an architecture license, and the tools to make use of it. So that customers can own their own destiny. They get the best of both worlds. They get the RISC-V architecture, they get interoperability, they get standards, they get the huge power of the RISC-V ecosystem. And yet, they are not locked into a standard product that everyone else has the same product. They have something unique. They own their own destiny. I mentioned this, you know, we have a portfolio. But because of our studio EDA tool, it's incredibly easy to make micro-architecture changes or to make ISA changes in a way that is not possible with classical technology is not possible with most of the products on the market. And that means you can incredibly optimize. You get something that is appropriate for your application, that solves your problem, that adds value to your product. You can improve performance for the same area. You can reduce power for the same performance because it is your product in your application. You know about that better than anyone else. You know the software loads. You know exactly how to gain benefits. 
for that unique system. So to give a couple of customer examples, it's nice to have customers. We all love customers. Micro Semi in an audio application, customize things to run their particular algorithm. It ran 56 times faster. One and a half orders of magnitude, five, six times faster in the same area and for slightly less power. That performance increase, they'd actually budgeted on doing a process shrink. They thought they were gonna to have to move to the next node. Because their algorithm ran so much faster, they didn't need to do that. Higher performance, lower power, and a significant cost saving from using an old, cheaper process. And specifically, you can see there how we went through iteration after iteration, tweaking, tuning, simulating, optimizing to end up with that incredible performance advantage. Another one, another of our customers, and this is actually, if you're interested in this, we have a demo running just over there, Hall 2, Stand 150, about 50 meters down the aisle. This is a AI application. It's running TensorFlow Lite, standard library, standard tools, handwriting recognition. Because of the customization, we could make that algorithm run dramatically faster. And in all, it's running about five times faster than the standard uh, off-the-shelf core that we started with. Five X, five X faster, better performance, better customer perception, better UX, in a slightly smaller area, and significantly lower power. Now just think about that. In your product, the thing you're designing next, your boss is telling you, it needs to be better. I need more. What would you do to have something that was 5x better for less power and less die area? Purely at the cost of a few weeks of work. Very, very compelling story. Very attractive. I thought we had a, a third example. The third example is actually Mythic, again, in Hall 2. Mythic is an AI processor, incredibly elegant, very, very novel architecture, and they use us throughout that design. Like most AI processors, it's a step and repeat, tiled architecture. They actually have 76 of our cores in their die. Customized, unique, doing something very, very specialist for them. And again, far smaller than they'd budgeted. Development time, roughly half what they'd anticipated to get it working. And yet, working beautifully, shipping in volume. So, to summarize, Moore's Law, Denard scaling have stopped. We can no longer rely on dumb shrinks or doing the same old, same old to get high performance. Instead, we must be smart. We must be good engineers. We must look at architectural innovation. Domain-specific acceleration, heterogeneous compute, hardware software co-design are the buzzwords for the next decade. And those are the tools that Codacit gives. Building on the RISC-V open standard, leveraging the ecosystem of RISC-V, but enabling our customers to do something truly unique and truly compelling. Thank you very much. Thank you all.